Hey, internet family, it's Uncle Zach. My nephew Duke will take you through the last episode in our series of CMOS for Dummies. He has a few myths about CMOS. We want to bust loose. I feel like busting loose. I feel like busting loose. Hey, hey. <laughs> you go ahead, nephew, because I got stuff to do. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Zach. Let's get started because we all got stuff to do. Let's start with myth number one. CMOS contains 92 out of 102 minerals that make up the body. Yeah, CMOS is nutrient rich. However, out of the 118 elements on the periodic table, there are only 92 naturally occurring elements that appear in nature. And all of these elements derived from nuclear reactions either in the sun, within the sun, or deep within the earth. Seven of these are radioactive and six are inert gases. Therefore, out of the 92 naturally occurring elements, only 79 are able to be utilized by us as humans. So as far as the 92 minerals found in sea moss goes, that's a great mystery that many are working towards finding evidence of. This belief has been popularized for quite some time now. However, in my experience and years of being in this space, and with all the research I've done, I haven't been fortunate enough to find any evidence of scientific analysis substantiating the complete list of 92 minerals found in sea moss. The list you tend to see are pretty much on Pinterest or on Dr. Sebi inspired websites and they're not really credible. Therefore, I'm gonna call this one busted. Myth number two, CMOS gets its nutrients from the rocks. Dr. Sebi claimed that CMOS has the ability to convert solid oxide, the rocks, into a liquid digestible substance. He introduced us to this concept or this way of thinking during a presentation where he stated that they, meaning the scientists, don't understand the workings of God but they're gonna give it a name. That a plant has the ability to convert a solid oxide substance into a liquid digestible substance. They call it iron throphorosis. CMOS does that. The globe is covered with a vast ocean, which contain more than just sodium chloride, also known as a uh, common table salt. Water holds 65 minerals all floating in an aqueous solution. The sea contains within the solution most of the minerals of the elements of the crust beneath it, the volcanic dust which has settled in it, and the materials washed into it by the rivers of the earth. Sea moss absorbs water and also the nutrients in all of their tissues directly from the surrounding water. They don't have the complex system of roots like a typical plant. Instead, sea moss has specialized tissues and branches that help nutrients and water move into their body. Sea moss also performs photosynthesis in all of their tissues, whereas most plants photosynthesize only in their leaves. Sea moss does hold onto the rocks, that is true. This is what is known as a hull fast which only serves to act as an anchor and not a traditional root system like plants on earth. There is no substantive proof that sea moss is capable of this. So sorry to say, this myth is also busted. Myth number three, Condus crispus is real sea moss and therefore better than and more nutritious than Garcilaria or Ukumai. A lot of people who make this claim 
in my opinion, based their ideology on an old archive video by Dr. Sebi. If you've seen it, you may need to search it out for yourself and process it for yourself. When I look at the transcript from this video, a question was asked by a member of the audience about finding real CMOS. Dr. Sebi responded, Ah, CMOS is known scientifically as Condus Crispus, right? However, please note, in this archive video, you'll see a sample held up about four minutes into the video, which is a thin yellow twig-like sample, much like what we have grown in the Caribbean. And to be honest, Condus Crispus doesn't look like this. Thanks to clever marketing, many have been led to believe one is better than the other. As far as the difference between Garcelaria and Condus Crispus goes, there are different nutritional characteristics or more than just a mineral level. Therefore, it's plausible, but it's not conclusive that Condus Crispus is actually better than Garcelaria or Ukumai. Myth number four, real sea moss has no salt on it. Having been involved in the farming, harvesting, processing, quality control, packaging, importing, shipping into the uh, United States and then using our own sea moss in our own kitchen, I could tell you for a fact that as sea moss dries out and naturally loses the water content it had in it, it leaves a fine salt residue on it. Remember what I told you earlier, how CMOS absorbs the nutrients through its surface? This includes the salt in the salt water and where it's growing naturally. The same salt water, guess what, has salt in it. This is why you find naturally occurring salt on the surface of dried CMOS. If it looks like table salt, I'll be more concerned, but naturally formed salt on dry sea moss is like dust. So I'm gonna have to say with this myth, it's busted. Myth number five, wild harvested sea moss is better than farmed sea moss or that farmed sea moss is fake. There are generally two ways that sea moss grows, in the wild or it's farmed. Growing sea moss in pools is not commercially viable, so we're not going to really talk about that in this instance. I'd like to point out that there is no difference nutritionally between wild-crafted or farmed sea moss. Sometimes the condition of wild-crafted can be poorer than farmed due to fish grazing. I want to stress that the nutritional quality of sea moss is determined by the quality of the water it grows in and not the rocks. Stop listening to unaware people tell you of fake sea moss just to sell you a product. There are many different commercially available species of sea moss available for consumers in northern temperate waters in the northern atlantic region you have condus crispus which grows and looks totally different from the tropical varieties that we have here in the caribbean or in warmer climates such as garcelaria and ikumai i want to point out that all sea moss is real the most consumed sea moss in our region is Garcelaria and Ikumai, and that's what we sell. Condus crispus doesn't grow down here, and so if people are selling you sea uh, moss from the Caribbean and they call it Condus crispus, it's just wrong. So that's where I gotta put that straight. Our seed stock is wild crafted. It grows in open ocean in a marine protected area where there is no commercial boating or shipping activity, no offshore drilling, and the water is pristine. We utilize the seed stock to grow our sea moss commercially in our farm. This means 
the amount we utilize will not destroy the reefs where the seed stock is collected, nor do we disturb the ecological balance of the reef system by trying to make a commercial enterprise from a delicate reef system. I've got to say, on this myth, it's busted. So there you have it, internet friends. Hope you enjoyed this final episode. I want to leave you with this little quote. He who knows all the answers has not been asked all the questions. I'm out. <laughs>